everybody, what's going on? It is Mac here. Welcome back to the first actual like coding video in uh, this set of tutorials. Today's video, uh, we are creating a style page or a style sheet. While I am kind of pretty new to HTML and CSS and web design with a text editor rather than a uh, web app, I'm not even a little bit new to building websites. I've been building websites as long as I've known they, they've existed. I've just never really done it entirely in code. But if there's a website out there, Muse, Squarespace, WordPress, Wix, Webflow, Weebly, Blogger, Dunked, Jimdo, I think there's one called like Moonfruit or something. That sounds right. I, I If there's a web service out, if there's a service to build a website, I've probably used it. So if I have, one piece of advice, like the best thing I figured out over the years of building websites, it's uh, to create a, a style page. And let me let me pull one up here. Right? We have a page on our website that's basically just a shell. There's not any real content on it, but we have uh, every header. So like here we have h1, h2, h3, h4, h5. We do have an h6, but it's down here in the table of contents and it's specifically formatted and not have margins. So it's only gonna look right in the table of contents. We've got paragraphs, hyperlinks, bold text, italics text. We've got a quote. I don't know if I'll ever use a quote on my website, but I built a quote block that I think looks kind of nice. Uh, we've got uh, a little container for keyboard input or code text. Uh, and we've got a form, kind of nice looking form with some uh, some little animations. And the idea is that we have a page where all of the styling for our website is kind of set. The color schemes, the fonts, the sizing, and then we can reference back to that later. Um, let's go ahead and jump in. I know I've and originally said that I was stalling, but stall making the uh, the text editor videos to stall. But I've actually kind of gotten pretty excited about this. So let's uh, go ahead and save this HTML HTML file. So we're gonna call this style.html, and we need to make a new document. Uh, this is gonna be CSS. So we're gonna do right in there. Do CSS. Do style.css then we'll open up the uh, head here and let's go ahead and get started so the first thing we need to do is uh, meta character set utf8 that's important for the browser and then let's do the title i'm just going to call this um style sheet i'm going to do meta name add some keywords here okay and let's do meta name we'll do description Okay, then we'll do, uh, let's see, meta, name, author, content, it's gonna be me, new, and then meta, and this will probably be the last tag that we do. Um, like I said, this is again, kind of a template page, so the idea is that I could just copy and paste whatever is here onto every page. Um, so I'm just gonna put kind of the basics, a description, a keywords, an author, the character set obviously and then i'm gonna do the um, meta name robots and then we'll do content index and follow and so what that's gonna do is say hey all of this information that we added for search engines to crawl through this is basically a meta tag that's giving it permission to go ahead and do that i guess well i know if you say um like no index and no follow I believe your website will not be indexed by a search engine. So if you're building something a little shady. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is link to our style sheet. So we'll do a uh, link, woo, that's not it, href. And then we are gonna link to CSS slash, what do we call that? I'll open that up here, uh, style.css. And we can go ahead and close out of that, do relationship. It needs to be a style sheet. And then let's hop over to a browser because what I want to do is uh, add some custom fonts to our website. And we're gonna do that uh, by using Google fonts. There are a couple of different font repository type situations online. I believe uh, Adobe has one or two different systems. Uh, you can even just upload your own custom fonts to a website and use those. So I want, uh, let's see, four fonts here. I want like a code font, paragraph font, a header font, and uh, and then I want a, um, a, a serif font uh, for quotes or whatever I might be doing with it. I don't know for sure, but I want a serif font. Uh, so 
what we are going to do is uh, go ahead and pick out some fonts. I'm going to start with uh, a paragraph. Oh, hey, there it is. That's the paragraph font that I use pretty often. It's called Lado. It's a nice one. So we'll just click Add. And then what I want to do is come in here over to Customize. And I want to make sure that we just have one um, text weight selected. So in this case, I just want the regular 400. A lot of these fonts have a lot of different text weights and I just want one. Um, next thing we need is a header font. Um, so I'm gonna do, launch that, there we go. This is a font that I've been using for like forever. Uh, and then we want a code font. So if we just uncheck everything but monospaced, we're gonna get those type of fonts. Uh, so let's just see. Well, it looks good. You can, if you come in here, you can type any text that you want. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll do the, you know, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and make it a little bit smaller so that it's more realistic to how it would usually be on a website. And then I'll just do A, B, C, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, B, W, X, Y, Z. And then we can click apply to all fonts and we can get a quick look at all of the characters. I guess we'll just do the um, source code pro, which is what we used before. Um, if you notice up here, Google is telling us that as we add more fonts, the load time is gonna increase, which I don't really know what to do about that. If you need more than like after, I've noticed that after like two fonts, it'll say, hey, load time is now moderate. It's not fast anymore. And I don't really know what to do about that. If, if you need more than two fonts, then you're kind of stuck. So, sorry. Okay, and then we just need a serif font. So, under serif fonts here, and let's do thickness. And I want like, not a super thin font, but a relatively thin serif font. And let's make it a little bit bigger because I feel like it would be. Oh, hey, that's kind of nice. What is that one? Amiri. Oh, that might be the same one that I've used before. I don't know. Whatever. I like that one. Okay. We have a link to put in the head section of our website. And it's also giving us information about how to use these um, font faces once we in, in our CSS once we have them. That's not really super necessary. I think we could have figured that out on our own. So we've got that little bit of text. I'm gonna paste it right in there and you'll see it's exactly the same thing as our CSS functions like basically identically to that. So anyways, uh, I think we are now out of the head section. So what we're gonna do now is just uh, get started. We do H1 here and we're gonna call this a partridge in a pear tree. Go ahead and close that tag up. Do H2, do two turtle doves, H2. Then we're gonna do H3. And now there are six header fonts um, or heading fonts. And I don't, if you're not gonna use all six, I guess it's not really necessary to style them all. But since I'm already here, like making a style page, I had a sort of specific purpose for each, for all six of them kind of lined up. It doesn't seem like much of a waste of time or anything is, is all I'm trying to say. If we're going to, to just style all six of them. So then we'll do um, H6, or sorry, H5. Whoops. And it's gonna be five golden rings, two, three French hens, two turtle doves. And then I have a specific purpose for H6, for header six. So we're gonna be removing that and moving it somewhere else later, but whatever, for this, for right now we'll do header six. And I'm gonna go ahead and start styling. So we have our CSS document over here that we created. And first thing we wanna do is set up some global, a few global attributes. Margin for the entire document is gonna be zero pixels. And then padding is also gonna be equal to zero pixels. And this is mostly for images. By default, things don't always play nicely with images. If we reload, you'll see what happens. We can always go back in and reset the margin and the padding for different elements. But by default, I just want everything at zero. That's made my job a lot easier. Next thing we'll do is we'll set up a class for the body here. And that's just to change the background color of the website. So we're gonna do background color. And you know what, this is a nice color. I've got this handy tool up here, it's called SIP. Uh, what it's gonna do is, whoops, if we just click it here, it's gonna give us a little picker, color picker window. And let's see, let's get that 
color right there and we can just paste it in. So now let's uh, mess with these H1s here, uh, our, our headers. So we're just gonna do, uh, each one of these is gonna get its own class and for right now, for my purposes, I'm just gonna be naming the classes H1, H2, H3, so on. So H1, first thing we'll do is we'll do font uh, family and we'll do uh, Montserrat. And we need to specify that it's a sans serif font whenever we do font families. And then we'll do font and weight, 400 for all of those. And now if we take a look, we should have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so then text align center. Then we'll need to do a, I wanna do a top margin. So we're gonna do margin top, we'll do about 150 pixels. Then we're gonna do a font size command. There's two different ways to do font sizes. You can do 72 pixels. That will change the size. But what I've been told multiple times is that a better way to do it is with this default um, setting. Uh, so if we type in one EM, this is kind of a HTML specific font size. So by default, one EM is like 16 pixels. And what we can do is if we set this to like say four EM, we're gonna get basically the same size header, but what it's gonna, that's gonna do is it's gonna play nicer whenever people try to like resize a page, if they resize the fonts or the text size on a web page. So there we have that. And let's do, I'm gonna set up uh, left and right margins just to be like 10%, nothing crazy. I just don't want them to run into the, um, the side of the browser ever, so. We'll do that. And then what am I forgetting? Oh yeah, color. And I like to do the color based on RGB. Uh, that's my favorite. You can use hexadecimal, you can use HSL, you can just type in colors like that if you want to. Um, I prefer to use the RGB value. So in this case, what I've been doing with our colors is I'm gonna do RGBA, which is gonna allow us to also have an alpha channel. So I'm just gonna set up pure white, 250, 250, 250. And if I hit the comma again, I have an alpha value. And if I set this to like 0 0.5, it's gonna be white at half the opacity, which I think looks is a cool way to do things. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna set it to one because I do want all of our headers to be basically just pure white. This looks a little blue to me. And I don't know why. Ah, I see what I've done. I've made the mistake. I see the mistake that I've made. 205, there we go. Okay, so put the A back in. Let's do one again and then see if that looks like pure white. Oh, thank God. Now what we're gonna do is make six copies of this. Um, actually, we'll just do one at a time. If you uh, highlight a class or really anything in Adam and just hit Command Shift D, it'll make a quick little copy of it. So now we're on to H2 and it's gonna be pretty close to the same type of situation. I'm gonna basically just change the margin to be like 50 and then the size to be maybe 2.5 EM. Yeah, that's, maybe it could be a little bit bigger. Maybe we'll just do like three. Yeah, that'll do the trick. Go ahead and copy that one. That's gonna be H3. And with this one, we'll go ahead and go down to two or whatever. Maybe we don't need to go that small. We'll do, um, let's say 2.5. Yeah, that'll work. And then we're gonna Make another copy of this one for H4. And I know with H4, I want it to be basically exactly the same. I just don't want it to be center justified. So we're gonna justify it to the left. Very nice. Uh, and then H5 is gonna be same thing as that, but slightly smaller. So we'll just do two, or maybe we'll do like 1.7 or something weird, I don't know. Is that too small? That almost feels a little bit too small for a header. One thing I will do is I will uh, decrease this margin a little bit. We'll do like 25 maybe. Yeah, I think I think that should be fine. Um, and then H6 is identical to H5, but the important distinction is that we do not have any margins on the left. Well, we ha we'll have a we'll keep the top margin, but the left and right margins have got to go. I will show you why that's the case in actually just now. Yeah, I'll go ahead and show you now. Um, so we can go ahead and delete this. And what I'll do is I just want some text. Uh, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and copy and paste over some text that I already did type out here uh, just because I'm lazy and that seems like the way to go at the moment. This is from uh, the beginning of Dune. Okay, so if we preview this, 
can do that. Um, we're going to need a class for the paragraph, and uh, let's set that up. Shouldn't take too terribly long. This is one of the simpler classes that we're going to do probably. So we're just going to do text align to the left uh, and then we need to do a, a margin to the left like 10% and then a margin to the right again 10% and then color and we're going to do RGBA and we'll do let's say like 0.8 for the uh, the color value there. Let's see if that looks too dim. We could almost go a little bit darker, maybe, maybe 0.7. Uh, that's almost too much. Do um, 0.75. Then we'll go ahead and do text size. Where is it? Am I doing that right? Oh, it's font size. I totally, that's what was going on. And then I'm going to do one EM just because I want to create a, uh, a little marker here in case I want to make the text slightly bigger. Um, a lot of times I'll end up doing like 1.05 or something or 1.1 just because I want it tiny, tiny bit bigger than what the default is. And then what do we need to do? We need to specify the font family is going to be uh, our, our, our uh, body font here is uh, called Lado and that is also a um uh, a sans serif font. So I think we need a, uh, am I doing that right? I hope so. And then one more thing for the font weight, again, 400 for all of these. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's, um, let me make an ordered list and let's go ahead and give that the P class. And so what that's going to do is, is set it up so that we have an ordered list and it's going to look the same as a generic paragraph. So then what I want to do is I'm going to add a list item and inside of this tag, what I want to do is set up an H6 with the class H6 and then I'm going to call it like a uh, privacy policy, something to that effect. Uh, and then close the H6. And then if we do a break, we can start typing like, let me, uh, let's see, let's uh, give ourselves a little bit of room down here at the bottom to work. So if we take a look at what we've got, we've got a list and what I want to do is styling inside of the list itself. And this is helpful for like a privacy policy and a terms of service or any kind of list, any kind of big chunk of tech that you want to structure as a list. Let me try to get this as complicated as I can. So I'm going to, while still inside of our ordered list, I'm going to create another, let's say unordered list. So that's going to be that. And then we're gonna do list item, list item. And we're gonna do another H6 class, H6, another header. And then I think for every individual list that we create, we have to add the paragraph class or our margins will get all screwed up. So let's go ahead and preview that. Okay, yeah, so if I do this or unord this second list that we've created without the class, gonna kind of fall apart and look weird. It's not gonna indent properly. So to get the indentation the way that we need, we're going to do a uh, class P. Okay. So inside of here, I'm building a fairly complex list. It doesn't have to be that crazy. Um, let's see, let's do list item inside of this. It's going to be item one and then close that list item, item two, and then close that list item. Refresh it here, see how it looks. Okay, now it's looking a little funky again. Oh, that's right, I have to do another ordered list inside of that, class is equal to P, and then reset that. Okay, I don't feel like I'm doing, I don't feel like I'm doing a really, really good job articulating why I wanted a, a, a header just specifically for lists, but the point is I don't use these like complex embedded lists very often, but if I do, I'm gonna want headers um, inside of those lists. So that's the idea. So the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some bold text, italics text, italicized text, and uh, a link for us to set up those classes. What we'll go ahead and do is I'm just gonna open up a strong tag, uh, and we're gonna say, hey, this is some bold text and close the strong tag and then we're going to do an emphasis is some italics text close the emphasis tag and then i want to do a href we're going to link to https colon slash slash we'll do google actually we'll do apple.com it's been a minute since i've been there we need to do um, i'm going to add a little bit of something extra here target and set that to blank 
Okay, what that's going to do is uh, make sure that our link opens up in a separate tab. And then we're going to say this is a hyperlink. And if we've done everything right, everything should look good, except our link is going to look like total garbage. So there we are. Looks great. Our link does work, but it looks like trash. We're going to have to mess with that a little bit. We don't actually have to create separate classes to adjust the uh, the links. If we come in here uh, to our CSS document, we have uh, basically a little spot where we can just type a for the you know a tag href link you know that type of thing uh, and then if we just hit uh, link we can start typing css so i'm gonna do uh i want to set the color to be uh let's do rgb and we're gonna do 250 250 250 so that anytime we have a link inline text it will stand out but kind of subtly it's just going to be brighter than all of the other text so if we reset this now this is our hyperlink it's right here next to our text it, it does stand out um actually let's do a text decoration none and so yeah now it will stand out but just because it's a hyperlink and just in case some browsers like to do like a background color thing on it i want to make sure that we don't have any of that so i'm going to set it to transparent make sure it's still working and then this is cool but it'd be nice if we could have the color change on hover or when it's visited or when it's active which I mentioned because we can. I just actually recently figured out how to do this. This is a, a big new step for me. So I'm gonna make, let's see, four copies of this. Uh, one is gonna be what happens when the link is visited. Uh, one is gonna be what happens when a link is hovered on. And one is gonna be what happens when the link is active. And three of the four of these are gonna be exactly the same. Um, I don't really want the link to change color or anything when a user has visited it or when it's active. I literally just want some color change when we hover over it. So I'm putting all four here because by default, every browser is gonna have its own set of rules for links. And I just wanna make sure that we're saying, don't use your rules, use ours. So on the hover, uh, I'm gonna use uh, kind of the red color that I lean to a lot. Uh, the color value for that is 220, 20, and 20, or 220, uh, 50, and 50, sorry. And that's kind of a nice muted red that I like quite a bit. Now, if we go ahead and refresh the page, hyperlink is gonna change when we come over it. If we click it, it's gonna take us to apple.com with three P's instead of two. So the link isn't actually gonna work, but if we click on it, it will work. It's not gonna change color or anything once we've once we visited it. One last thing I wanna do is uh, I don't like the way that um, it just kind of cuts on and off. So this is cool. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to the original uh, class. Uh, well, it's not technically a class, I guess. A colon link. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another line here. I'm gonna call it transition. And what I wanna do is zero point, we'll just do like two S for right now. And that's gonna stand for two seconds. So now you saw that if we come over here, over two seconds, it's gonna change and show up. So I'm gonna do, I like 0.3 seconds, I think is a good time for the transitions. 0.3 to 0.5, I'd say anything over about half a second is probably overkill unless you have a very specific goal in mind. But now if we come over here, we just have a little bit of a nice fade onto our link, which I think looks nicer. So we're gonna end it there today. Thank you for watching everybody and I will see you in the next video.